Hello, in this job walkthrough, we're going to talk about our PDF display link job. So the basic idea here is there will often be times when we're working with uh, the, the builder page type, and we're going to get some data that isn't directly supported with a, a default content type. Now, it should be said that in the future, this in particular, what we're going to talk about in this video, is probably going to get a fe uh, feature that does this automatically. Um, but we don't have it right now, so it's helpful. And indeed, if there's a different type of uh, data type that you want to get uh, that, that still isn't supported, this is going to be very handy. Now, what I'm specifically talking about is displaying PDF files um, when they're being pulled from a builder query. So as I can see right here with my FB demo database, I have a, um, a couple rows of data. And in the image, image column for the Joe Smith entry, I have some raw PDF data. And so I want to repeat over this data and display this as a link to my user. Um, unfortunately, we don't have a direct PDF token yet. Again, we'll probably have one in the near future. But because we don't, we're going to use the function token to wrap some custom logic around that item so that we can, in fact, display PDF data. The way it works is pretty simple. I have a builder page and a repeater uh, item. And for its image column here, I simply uh, created a, uh, a C token. This is our function token. And the name of the function is PDF link. And then the field I'm passing in is ID. So what RackForms does is it's going to, every loop of our results here, it's going to call a function called PDF link. And as an argument to that function, it's going to pass in the ID column of the database. So PDF link is the function name, and it passes in the ID value. Now PDF link, the name of our function, is defined in the PHP topcode section. So whenever I use the function token, I have to write the function that I want to call. And so here then is PDF link. Now the value that we're calling here again is automatically passed. So I'm going to create a local variable for it, in this case called val. And then all I'm doing is just echoing out a link now that is called PDF file. And it's going to call a page called getPDF.php. And it's going to pass an ID property of val. So we're using this val here as we would expect it to be, the ID of the field that we're passing in. So getPDF.php then is defined as this page right here. And all this page does is it just runs a query module that selects the image from FB demo where ID equals question mark. And we're using the question mark because we're passing in a dynamic variable. And the dynamic variable is GID. GID stands for get variable, that is our query string, of ID. When I run the form, it looks a little something like this. I have my image column. And when I click on PDF link here, it opens up a new page and it displays the PDF. So let's go over this one more time, just so hopefully it's clear. Within my builder repeater, I have a function token that calls a function that we define called PDF link, and it passes in ID. I pass in ID because ID is the unique value for each one of these rows, right? So I'm going to use the ID of 48 right here because when I click on this, it goes to get PDF.php, and the query module says select the image from FB demo where ID equals question mark. Again, we use question mark because it's a prepared statement. So ID is in fact equal to GID. G stands for a get variable. And the ID, of course, is going to be the value that we're pulling off right here. So again, we can actually see this here when I run the form. If you look down at my status bar right here, you'll see that as I mouse over each one of these PDF links, that number changes. ID equals 22, 23, and then 48. So if we look at these 21, 22, 23, and 48, that is in fact the IDs right here, 21, 2, 3, and 48. Because we then click on this link, we're passing in as a get parameter, ID equals 48. And because that is what our query module is looking for, a query string of ID, it then uses that value 48 to pull this value, in this case image, from the database. Now I should mention there's one final little bit of logic that's happening here. If I click on this query module here and scroll down to its code to run after query, this is where we're actually displaying the PDF to our user. So if I open up the advanced editor here, you can see that I issue two header calls, and I echo out the value of that query item, and then I exit. 
So this is, of course, where the PDF display part happens. This is a very common technique. You often see this with um, uh, image displays. So if we have images that are sitting in a database, we'll, instead of application PDF, maybe it'll be application JPEG, for example. And then we'll issue a header statement then to uh, spit out the image in real time. So it's a very common technique that we're doing right here. So again, this is a little bit more advanced uh, functionality, but the idea that we can uh, take a type of data that's not supported and display it in rack forms regardless um, is something that's incredibly powerful and used for, uh, for other types of uses for doing like AJAX calls and other types of data that aren't directly supported within rack forms.